Westfield. A gruesome discovery. Human bones and fragments first believed to have been what remained of seven victims. Police now say there are 11. Then last week, police unearthed the remains of five people on the Baumeister's grounds. The bones may have been in the woods for 16 months. Police say they have one daunting task remaining, identifying the victims. Then they say that would close a sad and macabre serial murder case that spanned decades. Mr. Baumeister's lawyer called the judge and asked to delay a divorce hearing. He couldn't find his client. Well, apparently, Canadian police have dead of an apparent suicide. And everyone since this, that time has tried to distance themselves from the, from the story to try to get the property value back up. But just things keep happening to, that lead us down this other path, which is to tell the story. Two families had hired me as a private investigator to investigate their disappearance of two of the relatives. Intelligent haunts um, are supposedly something that you can interact with. They're sort of living, you know, in, in the current time period. Or versus um, residual, which is almost like, a, almost like a tape recorder. Very briefly, I saw someone in the woods and it was just a person that looked like somebody walking through with a red shirt on. And I said, where is he? And she said, well, he's gone. I said, well, where'd he go? And she said, well, um, I didn't tell you, but that's the second time I've seen it. The serial killer is extremely intelligent. I was standing right outside these doors, looked over to the woods, and a um, relatively young man walking away. And he had, it was the same, looked like the same guy, had a red t-shirt on. I think there were times his parents were afraid of him. I'm going to be honest. I think there were times that when he would flip into certain rages or things as children can do. He, he looked like he was going to walk into a tree and then when I looked a little closer he didn't have any legs. He disappeared and he just sort of disappeared into the tree. His life history leading up to, to uh, everything in a case of a person that was not mentally stable. Uh, he was in a mental institution at a younger age. I could be a serial killer, you could be a serial killer. They appear to be perfectly normal. normal, normal. Herbert Baumeister is the Hamilton County businessman who committed suicide in 1996 after detectives dug up the remains of seven men buried on his wooded estate. If investigators are right, Baumeister was a serial killer. Serial killer. Many visitors to the property have the sense that the spirits of those killed here still linger. You don't know anything about this? Not a, not a thing. Okay. I have no clue where I am or, or any history of this place. Okay. What do you think, Tracy? Interesting. She said, a man in a red shirt with no legs. And uh, she said she'd seen it twice. And he's walking away. Now, I've been married 25 years. She never told me anything even remotely like that. They're not doing anything wrong, or they have no conscience in the world they're living in, and so they're out in the open. And sometimes things that are out in the open are more invisible mm -hmm. than things hidden. During the time that Herb was traveling back and forth from Ohio, several bodies that they felt had been abducted from the Indianapolis area, he had been seen getting in the car with someone with Herb's description, and was never seen again. He's going to be finding bodies right now. I asked, did they find anything? And they said, oh, yeah, that's one of the most haunted houses in Indiana. And I said, well, wh why, why do you say that? He says, well, haven't you seen anything? And I said, well, I haven't, but my wife has. She said, if you look out your master bathroom window, which is right there. Three trees in a drainage ditch, she saw a guy in a red shirt with no legs. 
During that investigation, I had an informant that made contact with me that said that he had been with somebody and had taken him to a house on the north side of some strange things that happened to him at the house. Now, I've been married 25 years. She never told me anything even remotely like that. That's how the spirits communicate with the living by the mere thoughts of the things of the past. Okay, that's the native way. He was intelligent, but there were, he still had this, uh, this horror about him. Every time he came in, he just never, he never stopped. He always asked me to come up. He indicated that he met him at a gay bar and that they left the bar and drove north uh, out of Indianapolis. In 1996, this whole area was very remote. It's just something that was a big wall saying, no, don't He indicated that they made several turns around, so he wasn't 100% sure which way they'd gone. He talked about his property up here and that to, to come up and see it, which again I thought was a strange thing to ask for some nuts and bolts. The Law of Averages. Ask enough people, and eventually, you'll get someone to take you up on your offer. They came into the house, uh, went to the uh, basement where there was an indoor swimming pool. A lot of investigators wouldn't have taken this case, and Mr. Vandegrift did because of his background and homicide investigations and and around the swimming pool or in the area of the swimming pool was mannequins the person I met had said that his name was uh, Brian Smart and that he was a caretaker of the property while the property owner was out of town You know, you just have someone who's mentally unstable and who is the epitome of where a serial killer starts. They were in the basement of the house at the swimming pool level. And uh, they did some uh, alcohol and did some cocaine. As he told the informant, I've had accidents. After they played around for a while, the, the individual, who later was found to be her Baumeister, asked him if he had ever done anything with uh, having something put around his throat and, um, in other words, uh, asphyxiation. What I felt was like a drug feeling. I felt very much like a, the old days of like quaaludes or Something's coming down like a. Yeah, temperature readings, EMF meter readings, and uh, do some uh, magnetic readings as well. He told her no, he had not done that, and he suggested that do it because it's extreme high during a, a sexual encounter. Sexual asphyxiation is. is um, but some people's kind of a normal process. Some people just do it all the time. There are two people very much that are still, I would say, trapped here. Increasingly more common is the practice of capturing spirit images in the ripples of water. Focusing the camera on ripples in the pool informed the investigators that they were not alone. Is this a residual image? A watery death mask depicting a victim's final moments? They will cut off the blood supply to the brain and then they know when to let loose. Is it Philip or Phillips or it's another name? So Herb put a swimming pool hose around his neck. Herb started out 
using it as a sexual thrill. The informant could feel the effects of it, felt like he was going to pass out, so he acted like he passed out. He stayed like that for a couple of minutes, and then when he opened up his eyes, Herb was extremely surprised that he was awake. Uh. Serial killers are very intelligent people. They know um, exactly what they're doing. We had an independent psychic come who was not familiar with this location whatsoever. Never heard of it. I didn't even know where she was after I told her. And as we sat down after she walked around a little while, she said, uh, well, there are spirits here. Uh, as soon as we pulled in the driveway, it's a real long driveway, and I just got this sense of, um, of dread. The first thing I'd seen in the woods, the, the red shirt, the dog took right up, right, right after it. It was really spooky. Do you feel anything in here? What do you feel? I feel nothing. Vicki feels something. Murder done here. Is there someone trying to enter through here? Can you show us a sign and let us know that you're here? There's something. It's kind of weird. I know. Um, what to look for in a, in a potential victim. Um, he would look for people that were obviously over drinking and he'd wait until they became intoxicated and then he'd have a conversation with them and, and, and talk them into uh, coming up here with him. When they were intoxicated, he had a much better chance of uh, controlling them and getting them up here. Hmm. I'm getting like an Edward or Edwin, Ed something E. There was two people that got killed in here. And another person by the name of Ron, Ronald, Robert, something with an R. So they both talked about what had happened and, and went to sleep. Uh, he was going to try to get Herb's billfold from him to get his name etc. As he came close to Herb while Herb was asleep, Herb moved around and he was afraid that Herb would wake up and see what he was doing. So after Herb did wake up, uh, they talked about what happened and and uh, Herb had taken him around the house, showed him some rooms in the house. What I believe EVP is, a, is supposedly the digital imprint of a voice that you can't hear with your ears. So the theory is that these spirits sort of know, having lived in sort of um, this dimension at one time, they know what the capacity of the human brain is and then they're gonna use the energies that they have available to them to manipulate it into something that they know that we understand. He said that one of the rooms in the upper part of the house had a video camera set up. But I'm sitting at my computer here, which is just feet away. This door flew open so violently hard, it left a huge mark in the door. And that one of the rooms down by the pool area also had a video camera set up. He uh, then talked Herb into taking him back to Indianapolis, which he did, took him back to the bar where he picked him up and let him off. Uh, they had talked about getting together and meeting again. So he had this flip side life that he got to control. Part of the theory of why he took that particular person back, Herb would normally pick up people that were maybe 5 foot 10, 5 11, 150 pounds, something like that. 
This guy was like six foot five. He was not you know, a large build, but he was an extremely tall person. And he was very vocal with Herb, let Herb know that he wasn't going to let him do anything really bad to him. In uh, fact, man, was during part of it, he'd even told Herb that he thought maybe Herb had killed one of his friends, and Herb back like he didn't know what he was talking about. As with many serial killers, this one had a Jekyll and Hyde personality. And all these men out there being killed for nothing. It was early last fall. When Herbert Baumeister's kids found a human skull on the property, Baumeister is said to have taken it away and explained that it was somehow related to his father's work as a physician. The skull has not been seen since. About the same time, an informant told Indianapolis police that Herb Baumeister was the last one seen with a missing person they were looking for. Herb Baumeister had actually had made contact with him and we tried to set up another meeting in between the two of them and Herb uh, just didn't show up for the meeting. He did show up at the informant's house one time and we uh, tried to figure out how in the world he found out where he lived and how he showed up at his house. Halfway down this garage, the forensic anthropologist, because he took very precise measurements, was a huge mulch pile. Very large, 10 feet tall. It would take a backhoe to dig through it. This would have been the initial spot where he was dumping them or hiding them, hiding the bodies. And this creek is where the majority of the intact bones were found. Now they never found any skulls here. Any skulls, any skulls here. My stomach here. What happened here? The intact bones were all found in this creek. See, uh, I'm very sick to my stomach. Right every, here. Everyone gets sick. A panicky kind of feeling around this area. And I don't know if that's coming from him or a victim or this area. This whole area right here. See, I came out to breathe. Informant ran into him again at a bar and, and had one of his friends watch him and got the license plate number of his vehicle. And then that's how um, it ended up pinpointing that it was her Baumeister, the vehicle was registered to him, and at this address. The informant also told us that when he was coming up the property, he saw what was a backhoe on the uh, right-hand side of the property. I think there's five more bones. I think if you would dig here, there's five more bones. Uh, the informant, there was a backhoe parked right in here. The only backhoe he knew about was the police had brought in to dismantle that mulch pile. But no, this was here when... When her, before that? Yeah. The rolling hills of Fox Hollow are now but a shallow grave for those poor souls not yet identified. Ground penetrating radar unit. Okay. Designed to find graves that are buried under the ground. Ground penetrating radar was brought onto the property to help verify the psychic's predictions. I rolled it there and seen it. I rolled it over there and didn't see it. I rolled it over here and didn't see it. Okay. So if I rolled it right here and didn't see it, that tells me it's probably not a root. Right. If it's a root, I would see it all the way up to the tree. Yeah. And that's I did pretty... see stuff when I rolled closer to the tree. And actually, I want to kind of roll over through that area. Hope of unearthing further remains proved fruitless. She did mention one thing that nobody else had picked up on. She asked if you ever found rope in this area, and you did, in a hacksaw place. They didn't find everything. There's more back here. We found a lot of old bleach bottles down in this whole area, and uh, a lot of, there was some glass, there was a glass jar of Vicks Vapor Rub. And what would that, what would that do? Well, just a, you can put it under your nose just to cover up the smell of decomposition mm. if you're working around it or having to, you know. Let me tell you one thing, somebody did not die quickly out here. Okay, but it was a definite black figure and it went behind the trees and peered around and looked straight at us. And it was somebody he really liked. Because I was looking for things that would trick me on that, but it had movement and I watched it lean over. You did not want this person to like you. 
I can feel there's a lot of unrest out there. It might have been perhaps the apparition that has been seen may have been actually murdered there instead of another location. And uh, might, might even be buried there, someone that's not been identified. They will cut off the blood supply to the brain and then they know when to let loose at the proper time. The goal, according to the FBI profiler, was probably never to kill anyone. But after someone died, then it becomes no fun. And then you know the next time somebody's going to die. And it, it just became a pattern. Accidents. Not an accident. Accidents. And I'm picking up that one victim that I believe that he thought was completely dead already was not in the dragging out here or when he dragged him out here there was life like he came back to life in a sense some indications that there may have been some videotaping going on usually a serial killer um, they might have what Herbalife did call an accident and kill somebody. They are surprised that they got away with it, so they wait a reasonable period of time, maybe a couple months or even six months, before they do it again. And then when they do it and get away with it, they start when they start killing people again. The the times interval in between each person they could becomes less and less because they become more and more confident and they get, a, they get higher and higher off of the actual killing itself. He felt confident in bringing people up here and disposing of them because he was so smart he wasn't going to get caught anyway. Picking up on something? But to dump bodies in plain view, you know, on a property with children, is rather bold. Do you know of anybody besides your informant that got out of here alive? No, I don't. Like being pulled to it? Mm -hmm. Over behind the house where we were initially was where he burned them, but that was only after uh, a period of time after the skeleton was discovered by his son, he felt he had to, to clean up a bit. Well, as far as this particular property, I would say 15, roughly. The side of that drainage ditch uh, is where Milwaukee found uh, a right leg and things. Animals and things were, were dragging uh, these body parts around. They just become more confident in themselves, and that confidence uh, is displayed to the people around them. Uh, it's not uncommon, in, like in Herb's case, for the the wife of a serial killer to not know what what is going on, not even suspect anything. I don't think everything, for as compulsive as he was, I don't think everything happened the same way all the time. I think he actually killed two or three people in this woods. The complete intact skeleton that the son Eric found was just on the other side of these downed trees. It's right there. The burn pile where he was burning the bodies was in this area here. I think. I see somebody fleeing, almost like crawling. On how many nights, just like this one, did someone meet a gruesome end in these woods beneath that dreaded moon? How long would it take for a body to decompose like that? So, well, in the summer, depending on the heat and the conditions, uh, you know, a body could go from an intact body to a skeleton in two weeks, probably. This is the only coldest place in the house. Hmm. Right here. It 
doesn't feel right. I think he's here today, actually. He's, a, he's surprised that I'm here. He, he was the, the celebrated father on Valentine's Day. He sent his daughter, Roses, to school. And then as time went by, he became more and more confident. He was dumping the bodies closer and closer to the house. Mm -hmm. His son finds a complete skeleton right in this area right here. And the wife mm -hmm. said, looks like somebody laid down and died. Usually what gets them caught is they get so confident in herself that they start killing people and, and getting people closer and closer to where they live. He felt confident bringing people up here and disposing of them because he was so smart he wasn't going to get caught anyway. The Indianapolis police started to put pressure on him by going to his place of business and, and communicating with him, talking with him, and point blank just asking him if he killed anyone. Obviously he knew that the pressure was on him and that, that things were uh, building up. So after that happened, the theory is he decided he needed to clean up. It's a cigarette lighter that we found. It's old, huh? Yeah. There is some evidence he burned some bodies fresh, but this would have been done when the family was away. He was really perspiring. It wasn't just because he was rushing around. It was one of those. He was really nervous. He looked like they, you know, he's usually well manicured, but it just looked like he hadn't. They were dirty. Mm -hmm. He actually had some dirt. It looked like dirt to me. Now you gotta remember, you can start to see now how this is filling in. You will not see any of those houses in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. It's very, very dense. When you desecrate the body down there, burning it, it becomes a negative vortex. It is not hard to believe that someone could get away with this for some time. At the same time, his businesses were failing. Uh, his wife was confronting him. She decided to file for divorce. And when he got the divorce papers, he basically told her he was going to go to the lake with the kids and took off with the kids. That's when she decided to cooperate. Uh, the police went to the lake to to get the kids to make sure they were going to be okay, and luckily they were. At that point, he knew that there was definitely pressure on him because the police had taken the kids away from him. And at that point also, it started to hit the media. The news media was picking up on it. Herbert Baumeister and his wife, Julie, were buying Fox Hollow Farms. They'd lived here four years. Then last week, police unearthed the remains of five people on the Baumeister's grounds. The bones may have been in the woods for 16 months. At that point also, it started to hit the media. The news media was picking up on it. That's when he, he decided to go to Canada. He told his brother uh, that he was going to Canada and, and I think even borrowed some money from his brother. When he got to Canada, a female um, Canadian Mountie had stopped him in his car one night. Was just curious because he was sitting along the side of a road and had Indiana plates on his car. Uh, she questioned him, didn't see any reason to hold him. Fifteen years and uh, five weeks later. If you can imagine this at night, all the deer and the raccoon and everything hopping back and forth. She did notice that there were videotapes in the back seat of the car. Uh, she had no reason to hold him, she let him go. And then the next next day, uh, his body was found. Um, we are right here, right now, okay? Um, this is the camp store, and this is the way we came back. Was he by a river or by water? It was in a Canadian park. Is that a mannequin? And I'm str straining to see if the chest is going up and down, if the eyes flicker, the mouth, any movement at all, anywhere. And I remember saying, well, he's either a mannequin or he's, he's dead. I'm 
telling you, I was standing right over the bottom. I mean, my yeah. toes were practically touching his shoulder. That's, I'm right there. I'm not looking 10 feet away, 8 feet away, 5 feet away. I'm looking right over the top of the body. The waves were high like this on the night that we found him. And it was beautiful out here. It was absolutely beautiful out here. And there was a little al alcove where there was water. Yeah, that looks about right. Looks about right. That yeah, looks about I'm, right. The skin looked kind of waxy, almost shiny. But the, there was a beach area. And I'm looking down at him, and I got a really good look at the scene. My headlights are on, all the police headlights are on. It's almost like it's extremely well lit. He threw something in the lake. He had things with him. Even though I was only standing over him maybe two or three minutes, it seemed like a really long time. I noticed that the sand underneath the body was all smoothed out, and that struck me as really odd. Sort of like an altar. And his body was perfectly perpendicular in front of the car on the sand, like he had been placed there. Herb had laid himself on that mound. This body looked waxy. He almost looked like he had makeup on. It looked like he was prepared, almost like you might see him at a funeral parlor. I'm not kidding. It was that his hair was so meticulous. Uh, he didn't have that ashen look to it. His eyes were open. He was like this. Eyes open, mouth open. I remember that very clearly. I didn't see any blood on the face anywhere, no blood anywhere on the body. He was very well dressed. Um, I remember he had darker shoes on, you know. And he had the gun in his hand and he shot himself in the head. So where's the gun? I was there. I'm standing over the body. There's no gun there. Trust me, I had a really good look around. There was no gun there. An even odder thing, which doesn't surprise me. The sand berm that goes up and then it comes down and then it goes down to the water. On that berm were two gulls, seagulls, that were laid out next to Herb. Side by side, with the heads pointing out to the water. Just like this, looking out or headed out towards the water perfectly laid out, identical to each other. They were dead, but they had been strangled. Shoots himself in the head. Okay, fine. Still, where's the gun? He's not gonna shoot himself in the head and throw it. He's done. Where's the gun? I, nobody could ever answer that question to me. Which again is the ultimate serial killer that I'm in control and I'm going to take my secrets to my to the grave with me. This car was right behind him. There were a set of track marks where a car had taken off, went forward and exited out that road right there, and I had forgotten about that. They were initially told that by the Canadian authorities that the car was full of items, and when they got there, the car was empty. Uh, you're not going to control me. I'm going to control the outcome. What I feel about the videotapes and him, it seems to me like he burned those very quickly and all at one time just to get rid of the evidence. Ending his life was just the beginning of the haunting story. Had a huge protector spirit, Native American. It's not just here, it's like, it's like the whole area, something's been desecrated. But this almost felt like a ceremonial. So when you're talking about the hooded figure in the front yard, about what time of the day was that? It's probably about 6.30. 6.30. Coming home from work, blue jeans, gray sweatshirt with a hood, hood up, and he had his hands in his front pockets. Okay, did you see that out of the corner of your eye, or was it like head I saw on? the corner of my eye, and then I turned and stared at it as I drove by. There was a picture of a hooded figure standing right towards me, you know, like face to face, and he was taller than I was. So you got a picture of that? that they got because Naraki they'll scrape the ground down and yeah go pretty low but you never know like how far down the bones washed did they go how hard did they hit that or mm -hmm. 
maybe over in the other creek, some of that stuff might have gotten flooded away long before anybody ever did an investigation. Mm -hmm. Zahir, what's your name? What was that? Could you say that again? Is there anyone here who would like to communicate with us? Come out here and tell us your name. You have to speak up. Can't hardly hear you. Sounds like a saying do not. Why are you here? Are you scared? And pass on any messages that you might have. <laughs> Man wearing the red shirt, are you the I-70 serial killer? Talk to that man wearing the red shirt. Can you tell us your name? Man been seen in a red shirt out here in the woods or the backyard. Can you tell us your name? Okay. He would talk to the skull. It's almost like, again, I don't, he's not saying trophy to me, but it was like, that was the person. Well, straight from these logs, straight over there on the trail. Where are the skulls from all of his victims? Is it possible that an accomplice to Herb's atrocities is still out there? It's just been going the last year that something's been introduced to the equation, such as the renter. Do you want to get rid of this? Yeah. Then let's get it out of here. But I mean, I was drawn to the door when I walked into your apartment. That's the first place I wanted to go to. I was sitting at that chair, mm -hmm. and the door would fling open and hit the wall. The door would blow open like that. See, I think that possibly he brought them up through here. But this is the question. He did party with them up here. He's very powerful. This is going to creep everybody in the room out. But this is the question, because it's creeping me out. But this is the question. But if you came up here, you probably went home. But if you went downstairs, you probably didn't. This was one of his personas. You don't want him watching you. We're at the Fox Hollow Farm. It's approximately 841. And this is about 8 at 8 or 8 9. Okay. This area does creep me out in here. Later when I looked at it, there's also the shape of shoulders a hoodie and there's a bit of a face in there. Oh, I see it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see it too. That's what right I here. was... F yeah, right here. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, that's what I was kind of watching in the woods. It was kind of walking down the valley. Here's what in interests me. If you look in the background, there's a tree right there. Well, it stops right there. That's what I'm saying. It's blacking out the rest of that tree back there. That's right. That's right. The same basic figure that we saw in Central State. The same type of figure, you know. And when I took the picture, it turned like this towards me. This area does creep me out in here. Is this apartment a doorway to the unspeakable evil of past events still playing out here in spirit form? 
I'm getting like I'm getting like goosebumps over here in this area. So we wanted to do a little EVP and see if we could catch anybody. Why are you here? Do you know her? If that was you, please knock for us again. Can you knock twice? Disruption in the laser field may reveal the presence of an entity. Did you hear that? What was it? It's very faint. Yeah, I hear it. What's the last thing you remember? I was sitting, this is the second time I saw it, and this was within the last two months or so. My dog perked his head up and looked that way, like a, a cat or something just ran through here, and then he looked at me, and then he looked that direction, so that I looked that direction, I saw it running from the house into the bathroom, it stopped, put its hands on both walls, and then ran back into the house. Is there anybody here with us right now? No, it stopped and looked at me. No, and that, I saw that twice. I moved here back June of last year, I saw it. Scared the crap out of me. Jan, you want to ask some questions? Where are the skulls buried? 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 There's something there. Nobody's in the house, right? Are the spirits here crying out for our attention? As soon as we walked in here, like, and I was telling you earlier, like, like I'm not one on like, ooh, funny feelings or like yeah. personal experiences, but like I instantly felt funny. We want to know your name. Can you tell us your name? You went upstairs, right? Yeah. Is that you making noise over there or is that somebody else? Upstairs. It was like a wiggle, like sort of a ch -ch -ch -ch. That's something really close. They're gonna find something yet. <gasps> but I can tell you right now, this is the first time I have actually felt him, is right here. And I think it's because he spent a lot of time right here. I'm not even kidding, that's exactly. He spent a lot of time down here, but I think he kept, it wasn't like a normal person would keep a journal, but he had like a secret code. I just wanted to come back in this room to sort of compare the noise that we think we heard. Yeah, we come from upstairs. With the rattling of those swinging doors, and it just sounds, I mean, it, it sounds almost exact. All I did was wiggle them. Yeah. Is there a reason you guys came in here first? Or they just felt like they needed to come back? Yeah, look. Tracy and Beth and I were at the bottom of the stairs. And Tracy said he'd been hearing something. We stepped in here and we could hear something walking or moving around in here. So we stopped and was just listening. Feel my, feel my left hand. It's really cold. Feel the palm of my hand. Right below. Show me, show me your palm. Flip it over to okay. It's cold right here now. Somebody here? Shut that door if you're here. 
Shut this door. Can you make a sound? I'm not here to hurt you. What keeps you trapped here? He's either in this room or right there. He's standing in that doorway. Hello? Somebody there? Did you hear that? Yes. Oh, whatever. It's the rustle of clothing or something. Yep. Oh, I'm getting a little freaked out. It's like. You see it? Do you see it? I see it right there. Right there. Oh, where? 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 Right there. Right there. Has Herb materialized out of the darkness to claim another victim? They're actually getting a lot of attention tonight. Ask them if they're moving that light. Are you moving the light? solid objects and showing himself at will. It is clear he wants the investigators to know that he's here. But is this victim or killer? Is he pleading or taunting? Look like a white flash, like it's starting to come through in like a turn or something, and that disappeared cool. right over there. Paper wrestling. Is anyone wrestling any paper? Right, Never. Pull run. Pull run. Coming. So how many bodies do you think are here? 32. Okay. There's also a little girl here. If the shaman's words are true, how powerless this little spirit must have felt watching what was once a pristine playground transformed into a killing field. I think when people cross over, they're forced to look to see how their thoughts, feelings, and actions affected other people. And I feel like he is being forced to live and look at what he did and the lives he's affected and the horrific things that he did. And the room with the swimming pool was the one that was very powerful, too. What, what have you done to the pool? It was probably on our mind a little bit more what happened here. This is a positive vortex because they left Earth to go into the spirit realm. The longer the investigators were in the basement, the more disturbing things became. He made Jeannie shaky feeling in here. When I walked into this room, compared to everywhere else that we've been so far today, it was very heavy and it was very hard to breathe. 
and I still feel like it's I, I, I still feel like it's it's kind of hard to breathe. So. And the air feels thick. Does it not feel thick? When I sing as a young male, he's crawling out of the pool on his stomach, and he's getting up here and he's touching the window with his right hand. And the message came to me like, I got to get out of here, but it wasn't my feeling, it seemed like it was an impression left from someone else that had been there. What happens in this physical realm, this becomes a doorway into the spirit realm. So I had my flashlight already trained down this far end of the pool. As I turned my head back down here, I saw a black shadow right here at the end of the pool. And it was moving in this direction. Come on, make a noise. Why do you want us to go away? Okay. 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 Over and over, it's like a clip, like a residual. And it's only the middle section of it. I don't see what's going on before or what happens after, but he's clearly trying to get away. He's not casually getting out of the pool. He's actually like coming up on his belly. And then I think that's what he was into. So I think a lot of times people were brought near death and brought back. And I think a lot of time with, times with him, he didn't really want to kill them. Do we have any victims of her Baumeister in this room? Yes, the Archangel Michael now seven. No, I am. No, I am. Are you the person we were sent down here to talk to? about us being down here. Did you ever drown any of your victims? No, I just heard a... Did you hear that? Oh my God. Are you strangled in the pool? very and I think sometimes when he he's showing me what how this asphyxiation thing sometimes it would be almost like the head was cut off is it safe for us to be down here in the pool area
sounded like it was coming from the room back there. Yeah, like somebody walking. Uh, somebody walking towards me. Yeah, did you hear footsteps? Yeah, behind like you? behind me. It's freaking me out. I can hear footsteps or something. I can hear footsteps coming up behind us. Behind me. Oh my god. It was like something coming across the floor behind me and I turned around and listened. I wasn't sure if it was her, but I had not seen her moving. Oh, somebody's here with us. If you watch towards the... Uh... the middle there. I was not seeing anything that was a figure or something that you could look at and say that's a person. Uh, it was more like an energy. And I, I have seen it just about three times since we've been just sitting here. I, it, it really is more like an energy. Having heard and glimpsed signs of the spirits trapped in this house, the sense of relief at crossing over the threshold back into fresh air was palpable. There's still two or three buried somewhere. Of his type of personality, he didn't just have everything in there. He had some things other places. There might be something on the property. Predators roam, even today, waiting for the weak and unwitting, looking for prey that might be on the edge of the crowd, more vulnerable and less likely to be missed. In our battle against evil, we must use all of our resources. We must view our surroundings with our minds open and be vigilant to uphold the compassion that the human spirit is capable of. No, I didn't see any footprints going to the site where Herb was, not even what would be his own. Like in this smooth area, you'd think if he'd walked over there to shoot himself that there would be footprints in that smooth area going to where he was, but there, I don't recall seeing anything like that. I almost feel like he met someone who was, let's say, doing the same thing he was. And I was very drawn to the window that overlooks the woods. As I enter this room, I feel really strange entering this room. I feel like he's keeping an eye on, on everything. We've been doing this for a while, and sort of as a skeptic of the group, maybe I'm not as open as everyone else is to experiences, but I haven't had that many personal experiences, and this is one that I can kind of chalk up. I'm definitely a hard evidence type person with a science background, and that's something that we can kind of match up the noises and... I can't see I any, it's pretty anything legitimate. else. I can't see anything else making that happen. Especially because in order to, to try to debunk it since, since there, you know, you, since Rob was upstairs, when you walked up the stairs, we couldn't, we couldn't hear you. Right. As soon as you, as soon as you crested that door, we couldn't even hear the footsteps above us. Is that you making noise over there, or is that somebody else? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And we can't, <laughs> we can't explain 
evil resonates in our worldly plane in many ways and the stains it leaves behind are indelible and permanent. We must never forget what has happened here because even though these victims were not known to us, how they were taken affects us all. We must have understanding and compassion for those around us who are different because at some point we are all on the list of the odd and the unusual. No, nothing harmful that will happen here ever again. You.